This is our Hidden Killers Half Year in Review with True Crime Today. A look back at some of the most compelling conversations about the biggest cases we're following for you right here over the last six months in first half of 2024. Here's another one of those conversations. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. The trial of Chad Daybell continuing on. And in the last week, we saw a lot of Chad's children taking the stand. This is a new thing. We haven't really seen much from them at all. They gave an interview, I believe, to 48 hours a little bit over a year ago, confessing uh, how much they trust their dad and believe that he was framed and he had nothing to do with this, which, you know, if, if that's your dad and you had a relatively good upbringing with him in your mind, you're not going to want to think that dad is capable of what he's accused of doing. We're going to take a listen to some of that testimony. Joining me to discuss all of that, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent. Last week with all this testimony, before we get to the clips, uh, what's been your takeaway thus far? Um, it strikes me the same as Alec Murdoch's surviving son thinks his dad's the greatest thing on earth. Yeah. You know? And it's it's sad, but um, I think they're off in their perceptions. And you, you kids and their parents, Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we have them, because they love us un unconditionally in, in most cases. Although, if you look at this case, uh, on the opposite end of this, Colby Ryan, uh, Lori's son, has walked away and, and said, no, you did this, Mom. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting, because as we've seen with the two of them, that's why my original theory on how defense was going to roll with Chad was going to be placing it on Lori, because Lori is a little more obvious of a complete um, <laughs> nut job. I was going to say batshit crazy, but yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to say as technical as I can. <laughs> yes. Um, boy, I, I hate laughing at cases like this. Um, but, and so Chad has played the part of a semi-conscious human being, I think, for, for a part of his life. Sure. And just got... Uh, he just, he turned into a moron teenager, really, um, mm -hmm. that devalued human's life um, to serve his own purposes and needs. And so I think um, what the children saw from him growing up, obviously, was a lot different than what uh, Lori's did from her. Yeah, w without a doubt. Let's take a look at uh, some of this testimony. This is Chad's daughter. Uh, there's been a lot of question about Tammy's health. Uh, was she healthy before she died? Uh, a lot of uh, the Daybell camp saying, oh, no, she wasn't, uh, not at all. But if you actually look at the facts, she took a lot of supplements doesn't necessarily mean that you're in bad health, uh, but they certainly believed uh, that she was. This is uh, Chad's daughter talking about uh, Tammy going to bed early and uh, her enjoyment of uh, drinking colloidal silver. Take a look. Her health started declining. I was really worried about it. She, um, well, she'd always been one to to be able to meet the demands of daily life without being exhausted. And she started going to bed at like before dinner some nights, it would be like five, six, seven o'clock at night. And she would sleep in too, if given the opportunity. So suddenly needing to sleep a lot was very confusing to me. Were you aware of any other health maladies that your mother may have suffered from? She had anemia. Okay. Uh, were you aware of any medications that your mother may have taken? Um, she preferred herbal supplements. She did take the generic form of the medication Prozac. Okay. That was the only prescribed medication that she regularly took. Were there any non-prescription medications or herbs or, or uh, supplements that you're aware of? Oh, definitely. She really liked using um, colloidal silver was her favorite. It's Slow down for me. Colloidal silver? Colloidal silver. It's um, distilled water with particles of silver in it to the part per million. It tastes like you're drinking water out of a metal water bottle, and I can cure everything. Okay, and... and I say that with a smile because uh, you really should go to the doctor instead of drinking. All's for speculation. World. Go ahead. Yep. She would use colloidal silver as an antiviral is what she called it. So anytime she felt under the weather, she would take colloidal silver and she would... This calls for hearsay. Overruled. Yep. 
Go ahead. I witnessed her drinking it, and she would encourage other people in our household to do so. I believe Jim Baker just got sued recently for uh, trying to hawk colloidal silver as like the cure all for everything <laughs> on his uh, his YouTube channel. Yes, that Jim Baker from uh, you know, Tammy Faye and Jim. Uh, obviously, these are uh, you know doomsday prep type people, so probably the type of folks who would call in and buy that as well. Um, thoughts on that that testimony and and what her or the, her daughter and and uh, Chad's daughter you know, believed was going on with their mom. A lot of conditioning. Yeah, uh, it just seems doesn't it sound like a lot of conditioning there? I mean, yeah, she, it sounds like a robot. Yeah, um, she totally is bought into everything. I mean. I, bought into everything that was going on, bought into what their mother was doing. What I heard her describe her mother as is again, I'm not a licensed mm-hmm. doctor or clinician in this, but it sounded like some depression, no doubt. Yeah. Um, that was going on, you know, the, the sleep issues, that's the depression. So then the thing that entered my mind is what's causing that. Maybe, um, uh, maybe dad sleeping with Lori Vallow, that might have something to do with the depression. <laughs> and then what are you doing to, to regulate the pain you're feeling. What else are you taking besides mm-hmm. colloidal silver? I mean, so there's a lot of things you could be ingesting into your body that could be causing that depression as well, uh, which can cause mood swings and a whole host of other things because your husband is sleeping around with um, batshit crazy. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. It's, uh, it's interesting watching the testimony uh, of these kids. Let's take it's a look sad. at, uh, at another, go ahead. Isn't it? It, it, it's yeah. completely, it's, it's disturbing. It's sad. Uh, but what we're looking at, I think is a lot of, like you said, conditioning, um, and, uh, kids who are also brought up not to question anything either. Yeah. So what we're seeing with the kids right there, in my opinion, is you're seeing a part of his cult, mm-hmm. you know, they've been groomed in this cult since yeah. a, from a very young age, and so they're completely bought in because it's, you know, again, when you throw the frog in the water and you slowly raise that temperature, eventually it's going to boil and it's going to have no idea. That's what I think you're seeing with these kids. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.